doesn't even compile. Um, but you will hear another term too. So sometimes um, these are often called syntax errors because the error is in the syntax, the sequence of characters and words and symbols um, instead. So here's an example. Let's say we want crush to go forward, but we misspell forward. I misspell stuff all the time. When we press the compile button, what happens is we are told errors are found in the class. It says it right down here. I can click this link in the lower right corner, or I can press compile again, or I can just hit control K or command K, depending on Windows or Mac. And when I do that, I get more details. Undeclared method forward. Right? So it's basically saying, hey, this method you typed, it hasn't been defined anywhere. There is no method F-O-R-W-R-D. Um, so either that means one of two things. Um, either we misspelled it, most likely, um, or like we don't, we haven't written it yet if it's like one of our classes. Um, so that's a compile time error. We can't run our program because we can't even compile it. So let's comment this out. I want to leave it in the notes as an example but I want our code to compile. All right, so that's compile time. Let's do another error. This is a runtime error. What I mean by runtime, just to review from yesterday, this code compiles, compiles and runs, but generates an exception. So a Java exception is built into the language. They occur when something unexpected happens. And if we don't handle them, which we're not going to worry about in this course, um, our program crashes. So it generates an exception. In most cases, especially for us, the program crashes. So if I say crush.forward, and I spell forward right, but let's say I'm calculating how far to go, and this will be like overly simple. Oh, I didn't spell forward right. There we go. This will be overly simple, but let's say I do like 1 divided by 0. If I compile this, I get class compiled, no syntax errors. That's good. So I have no compile time errors. However, if I switch to the BlueJ project window, right click on the turtle demo class and run the main method. Yes, the turtle pops up, but the other thing that pops up is the BlueJ terminal window. And I get an arithmetic exception. And it gives me some details, which is nice. It says divide by zero. And it even tells me where the exception was generated. I can click on the underline portion here, and it will take me to that line of code and highlight it. So the nice thing about when we generate an exception is we're told what we did, we divided by zero, we're told where we did it, line 90, um, and we can click the link to be taken there. That makes it a lot easier for us to debug it and fix it. That's kind of cool. Let's comment this out as well. So some runtime errors result in exceptions. Other runtime errors don't crash, don't generate exceptions. They just don't do what we wanted it to do. And these are the hardest bugs to fix. So this is also a runtime error, meaning this code compiles, compiles and runs, but it doesn't produce the expected output. A big challenge of programming is the computer does exactly what we tell it to do, which isn't often what we want it to do, because we're still learning how to correctly tell it what to do. More specifically, we call this a um, 
a logical error. This is a logical error. What I mean by a logical error is, again, it, it doesn't do what we expect it to do. We, we have made a logical mistake. So in this case, um, what's going to happen is the turtle is going to turn right instead of left. But we want it to go left. So I'm going to add a single line comment here that says, have the turtle turn left and move forward 50. So crush.turn 90, crush.forward 50. So I want the turtle to turn left. I want it to take 50 steps forward. So I wrote those two lines of code to do that. And I press the compile button and it compiles. That's great. But if I switch, oh, here, cool little tip. Um, actually, let me, let me run it first. If I run it, it didn't do what I wanted. The turtle appears to have turned right and go forward. That's a logical error. The turtle did what I told it to, not what I wanted it to do. One thing you'll notice on my screen is the exception went away. The previous exception went away when I ran it, which is really nice because I know like that's been fixed now. That didn't happen on your screen. If you bring up the terminal window, you're still going to see that exception there. So go ahead and bring up the terminal window. If you don't easily see it, you can always get it from the um, view menu. Um, in the Blue J project window, or you can press Control T or Command T to bring up the terminal window. But I want to show you how you can get rid of the extra exceptions. In the terminal window, if you click on the options menu, check the clear screen at method call. The reason why this is important is otherwise old exceptions and old errors are going to be displayed in the terminal from like the previous time you ran it or several previous times. And it gets really confusing. You think you still have an exception, but you don't, it's just old output. So I check this box so that I always start with a clean terminal each time I run it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I totally agree with you. I think the default should be to clear the screen at the method call. Um, I don't know, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> All right, so let's switch back to the code now. So the logical error here is a misunderstanding on my part of how the turn method works. If I were to more carefully read the documentation for the turtle, I would see that the number of degrees I specify as an argument to the turn method specifies the number of degrees for the turtle to turn in the clockwise direction. So if I want the turtle to turn left, I would have to type in like negative 90 or 270 or whatever, right? Um, as an example. So I'm going to leave this like this with the logical error. So we have this as an example. So in our notes right now, so far this morning, we have an example of a compile time error. In this case, I misspelled a method. Another example is leaving out a semicolon. We have a runtime error that generates an exception. I divided by zero. There's other ways to get exceptions too that we'll get to. Um, and then I have a runtime error that's a logical error, the most challenging to find and fix, where the turtle did what I told it to, not what I wanted it to. So, tricky stuff.